Okay, this is a little bit hard to see. But do you see those three gray wires? Yeah, AC Delco, and they couldn't even give me three different wire colors. But at any rate, let me come into my wheel well here. There, now you can see it. See how I plumbed that circuit into my uh, oil gauge? Boom. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the wiring diagram right now. Okay, and what that's going to do is instead of having to run my fuel pump off a switch or just run it off ignition where, you know, it's going to sit in deadhead, deadhead every time you have your, not deadhead, uh, run and wear your battery down when somebody's either doing the alignment or you just have the radio on or whatever, it's going to have it to where one of those wires is going to sense oil pressure. And it's going to go to a, a relay, like your typical 80, 94, blah, blah, blah relay, like I just showed you in the wiring diagram. When it senses oil pressure, it's going to energize the relay and allow that fuel pump, which right now I am running it off the jumper. It's going to run off the uh, fuel pump that way. Yeah, it's going to, you know, ugh, I told you I'm tired. Unrehearsed, Sean for big blocks, raw, unedited, but, uh, then you're not going to have oil pressure that's that high when you're cranking. So you're going to have one go from your starter solenoid so that whenever your starter's cranking, it's also going to tell the relay, give power to your fuel pump. So that's kind of the gist of it. Maybe I'll do a video later explaining it a lot better because I know a lot of people get fucked up with wiring and a schematic doesn't do it. They need to see it. So I, I might just go ahead and do that. Uh, I like the Delca one because, it, you know, if you saw it, it had that molded rubber boot. And the way that's set up, I mean, I'm not going to get oil in there, <clears throat> water, anything. You know, I mean, what's what's the other? Holly. Holly makes one. Mr. Gasket may A bunch of people make them where they got screw terminals where you can just spade the wire and all that. But But they're naked. You know, they're wide open. Unless if you go get individual molded terminal ones and I mean that's easier to snag too I think the the one I used is good the only pain in the ass is it was too good I mean I literally had to get a little bit of Vaseline on there so it would slide on and it still took a lot of muscle so that's not going to be fun to get to I literally put the plug on the sensor first and then I cranked the sensor in you know with, I, I wrenched it in which means it's going to be a pain to get that cap off. Well, it's not hard to get it off, but it's going to be hard to get it on. So if you go the Delco route, I'm going to go ahead and just warn you about that. But since we are doing this, let me give you my part number. There you go. AC Delco, 14057554. Like I said, there's other options. Actually, I'll show them now.
but that's really the way to do it. I've been lazy and for five years I've just ran mine off, you know, ignition. And basically whenever I take it in, I just, or, you know, to a shop, I just tell them to yank out the wire from the fuse, fuse box if they need to keep the key on, which basically only happens when I'm getting it aligned. But uh, I think that's about it. If there's something that I overlooked, I'm going to go ahead and throw it in later. Okay, I'm going to slip a B-roll in. Uh, diagram's helpful, but it may be more helpful to see it along with the diagram. Sorry, it's not the most beautiful diagram. I thought about doing it in Photoshop and making it look more professional, but... Not only would that take a long time, but sometimes that just confuses people more. So maybe you could make something out of my chicken scratch. Maybe pause it, take a screenshot, print it out if you need help. If you're weak in your wiring skills or new to it. But basically what I did, all these older carburetor trucks, even the big full-size square bodies, they always have one of these. Okay, and that's hot. What I did was I collected some from the junkyard, which I did back in the 90s. It's hard to find them in the junkyard nowadays, depending on where you're at. A lot of the restore companies have them. But uh, I added one here, and I wired this back to my fuse box to give myself a nice thick gauge ignition hot. So not only will that be nice if I ever wanted to wire in a future... Uh, fuel injected wire har harness or a fast harness or whatever it may be but it gives you a nice spot and then what I had done also <clears throat> I added two in over here because I wanted an easy way to disconnect my battery but have really good thick battery leads plus the closer to the battery the less interference you get which not isn't a big deal for a fuel pump but it can be for some electronics devices and ignitions so that gives me a nice feature point to get a good ground and a good hot if I ever wanted to add a uh, again if I wanted to add a uh, fuel injected wiring harness or something in the future okay plus it works good for me because I got a stereo system with the jail audio box and I'm able to wire that all in too so this is my uh, my my stereo my uh, box my hot lead and this fuse is because my radio's got a built-in uh, 100 times 4 channel amp so disregard this this is not part of the regular wiring system but right below it is the relay and I'm gonna go ahead and slide in a picture of the uh, of it unplugged so you can see the typical four pin relay now Okay, <clears throat> and then what I also have that you can see this is going to a lot of it. I got a fuse junction where I used five fuses, okay? Now I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a little paranoid when it comes to wiring, so I tend to overfuse. Not only does it save a lot of your stuff if you run into any problems, but this makes troubleshooting a hell of a lot easier and I can always, uh, oop, I got to push that one on a little more later, and I can always come with the jumper wire and do a lot of stuff. You know, for example, if I break down, this orange lead right here is going to my fuel pump. I can take a jumper wire right from here, right to my hot, or here, or here. I like to run dual post batteries because it's easier to jump start people. So you can omit this. You don't need this. Honestly, you probably want one on the fuel pump. And you probably want, uh, let's see, where, where I have the hot lead coming in from my relay, which goes directly to, uh, to over here. Actually, you know what? It, I do have it fused. But you want to fuse on, on these two, you want to fuse. Hot to relay, fuel pump. For sure fuse those. Okay. My yellow fuse is what goes through my oil pressure, pressure switch that uh, threads into the engine block.
my pink is fusing what that's going straight to basically my fuse box, which is coming through here for easier access. And let's see. And then my purple, which is what goes to your starter solenoid. So I also got that running from a fuse. Okay, but that's basically going from my starter solenoid to here and then back to the uh, oil pressure switch. Which again, if you look at my diagram, spend five minutes looking at it if you're confused. And as you keep reading it over, it'll start making more sense. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea how I did that. You can see uh, I wired it. Well, first what I did and what I recommend if you're new to a lot of electronic stuff, have a bunch of jumper wires. You know, I have like 20, probably 30, all different lengths and sizes, all the way up to 20 feet. But have a bunch of jumper wires and just run everything off jumper wires. And if you're paranoid, put some electrical tape or something over the, uh, over the alligator clips. Make sure everything runs good that way first. And then basically start isolating out your wiring. It's tedious when you want to start making it look better. But you can see how I loomed it. And then you can see my, uh, well there's part of that, that thicker one's my stereo loom. But you can see where I loomed it right there. And then that loom comes up and around. And basically that top loom is all for my fuel pump relay. It may not be the most beautiful routing, but it's easily accessible. And more importantly, when I got to do engine work, it's not going to be in the way. Everything I do always is dependent on future maintenance. I don't want to do something quick and easy and unthoughtful now so that down the road, I create a headache for future maintenance. Now, if you bring it in and pay somebody, they may not care. They want to get it done quick and they want to make their money. But if you're doing it yourself, Okay, now as far as uh, the fuel system, you can kind of get a picture for how I mounted in, okay? And mind you, it's been about, what, about eight months that I've been running it this way. I'm just now getting to editing the video. So if everything's a little dusty, I'm sorry. I haven't cleaned it in a while. Uh, this has been the year of COVID. So I did all this right before COVID started and as you can see, I still haven't gotten my gauges because when COVID hit, I wasn't blowing money on car parts. Uh, our family was kind of being cautious. And then down there, at least on my 3.4, that's my oil pressure sensor switch. And then what I did to make it easier when I'm working on stuff, I made a quick release. Plus mine fits on really, really firm. But I made a quick release and I'll go ahead and give you uh, two better pictures of that now. The other reason it's nice to have the quick release, it gives you an easy way for future maintenance to check your resistance on the, the pressure sensor and on anything on the higher harness going back. So basically with this setup, it's very troubleshooting friendly.